This one is all about riser cables and performance degradation, should you be worried about using one. We've tested three different cables from five different brands of piece, that's 15 in total, to give you guys a good idea of what to look out for. If you're rocking the Windows 10 operating system and haven't activated your copy, click the link below and purchase an OEM license from SCD key. Then click here, 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 and then here, paste your activation key, and you'll have a fully activated OS in seconds. And be sure to use my offer code SStudio for an 18% discount on your order. To begin, I'd like to introduce our test system. I wanted something powerful enough that we'd be able to see distinct margins between tests, and that's why we use our Ryzen 7 3700X system fitted with a corrected MSI 5700 XT Evoke. We remedied the thermal pad issue a few weeks ago and ensured that operating temps were in check for these tests. Both the CPU and GPU ran with fixed frequencies and fan curves as well to ensure consistency between runs. I wanted something low enough to eliminate the possibility of thermal throttling, but high enough again to keep those margins. So I chose four gigahertz for the CPU, which is definitely underwhelming for this spec and then uh, 1.9 gigahertz for the GPU which again is a little below spec. Fan curves were locked to 50%, I don't know if I said that already but they were, and uh, temps never touched ADC for either component. One other thing to take into account here, a factor that almost botched this entire video, is the PCIe generation. Current riser cables for the most part are not spec'd for Gen 4, meaning you'll likely run into BSODs pertaining to video cards. I, I got several video errors, I also got a WHEA error a few times, you can get that for a number of reasons, but still, only the thermal take cables, for whatever reason, worked for Gen 4 without issues. They don't have repeaters as far as I know, so I'm not sure how they worked, but uh, we ran all the tests again with the Gen 3 spec only, so what you see from here on out will be with Gen 3 enabled in this board. It's nice that you can enable Gen 3 on this, uh, well, this is the X570 Aorus Master. Some boards don't let you do it, as far as I'm aware, but this one does, and uh, another reason why we chose this system here. By the way, switching to Gen 3 resulted in no statistically significant change in baseline numbers, just FYI, but I could imagine many faulting their riser cables by accident on account of Gen 4 while running a Zen 2 chip with Navi, so before you say it's a bad riser, cable, make sure if you're running a newer system like this uh, that you aren't running PCIe 4. And if you are running PCIe 4 and you have a Gen 4 M.2 drive, then you definitely want to keep Gen 4 enabled and not use a riser cable. But in pretty much every other circumstance, I mean, I can't really think of another obvious reason to, to keep Gen 4 enabled uh, if you want to use a riser cable. I mean, you're not going to be able to use one unless you buy a special one, and I'm not sure those even exist yet. So uh, I'll let you guys know in the comments if I find a Gen 4 riser cable, but for now, Gen 3 it is. All the tests will be with Gen 3. Now I use the 3 d Mark testing suite here, more specifically the TimeSpy DX12 test to chart performance over time with the manipulated variable. You'll see three tests for each arrangement, starting first with our baseline. That's no riser cable installed. So three tests for each riser cable. So that's nine for each company. And then uh, you'll see three individual tests for the no riser scenario, just to make sure that our numbers plugged straight into the motherboard are consistent. And with that card plugged straight into the motherboard, our test yielded scores of 8999, 9018, and 9004 respectively, giving us a three run average of 9007. Sorry about this first graph, by the way, having very small numbers. We're gonna have a ton of data on this chart, so I, I had to make the, uh, the font pretty small but uh, I'll list the data in the description if you want to check it out, if you, if you can't read certain numbers or don't hear what I say in the video. We'll also talk more about averages after we've run through each brand. So at this point, we could hypothesize that including a riser cable of any length, we'll talk about how length affects things shortly, but of any length at all, should at least give us scores that are equal to or lower than our baseline score, right? Since the riser itself is an additional point of failure and reliability concern. If we see higher averages with risers versus without, we should question our testing methodology. With that in mind, let's test our first triplet of riser cables, cable mod. I ran a poll on Twitter a few days ago and most of you thought cable mod would perform the best in these tests. That's actually pretty interesting. I wonder why that is the case, but as you can see here, scores were looking pretty great. A three run average for the first cable of 9,003, and then we have 8986 for number two, and 9,010 for number three. Now, let's run a sanity check. Yes, the third cable mod kit gave us a higher average score than our baseline, but individual scores didn't exceed our test number two no riser score of 9,018. And even if it had by a few points, I mean, we could chalk this up to small variances in software ultimately out of our control. 
Up next are the Cooler Master kits. Now I must confess, one of these is not like the other. It's actually twice as long as the other two, so I'll mark it with an asterisk on the chart. All three cables pumped out dependable scores with the longer cable falling roughly 10 points shy of its shorter counterparts on average, nothing I'd be too concerned with in the grand scheme of things. And this places the brand just behind cable mod on paper, but a one point delta is pretty much borderline irrelevant, right, in this context, because we're talking about thousands of points overall. Up next is Fractal Design. All three of these cables are exactly the same and fairly short. They're actually the, the, the risers that are included with some of their cases or optional upgrades. In fact, these risers from Fractal look identical to the ones sold by Cable Mod. So they were likely produced in the same factory, albeit to different lengths, different specs for the cases. I noticed that the first cable was performing slightly worse than the other two. However, the slack was carried and the average was identical to that of Cooler Masters. Again, no real outliers here. Fantex is the next company in the ring. These uh, risers are also sold separately with some cases, and uh, I've been stockpiling these for quite a while, again, for a video like this. Construction here is pretty consistent with other cables we've already tested, though the locking mechanism is definitely different, similar more so to what you'd find on a traditional motherboard. Here, all three risers checked out, ringing in average scores of 8991, 90-01, I should have said just 9001, that sounded really weird, and an even 9000. We're two hundredths of a percent behind Fractal and Cooler Master but I'd argue that uh, two points again. I mean, it's, it's rather irrelevant. Lastly, we've got the Thermaltake risers. These, I'll admit, are a bit older. They're also longer, so they'll be marked with asterisks. Uh, I've been holding onto them for several months, so they might have a new spec, but uh, this is what I have on hand. And uh, they're definitely different than the other cables tested here. Instead of a solid single wrap, we've got five individual groupings of cables and an extended length for use in larger cases like the Core P5 and P7. As a result, they're a bit more flexible, but difficult to use in more compact towers for obvious reasons. You don't want to crunch these up. Score-wise, risers one and three fared well, while unit number two struggled to keep its score around 8,500. This resulted in a brand average of 88.89 and a deficit from control of 1.31%. The lowest score, 86.56, technically falls more than two standard deviations from the mean, so it could be marked as an outlier on paper, but in this context, and since we tested the cable multiple times, we're aware that the cable is not performing to spec by, by fault of its own, right? So the result is repeatable and thus not being removed from these charts. Now, we obviously have a very small sample size compared to the tens of thousands of riser cables likely in the hands of consumers. So my confidence level is obviously very low. That or our margin of error would have to be extremely high depending on how you look at it. But this also ignores the fact that some of these risers may have been tested in-house prior to being sampled for review. This happens quite a bit in the industry and I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case here. So I cannot say that uh, our results will reflect obviously what you would experience as a general consumer shopping on Amazon or Newegg or in-house, right? That, that's just, it's inevitable. Um, and I don't have thousands of cables to test. And even if I did, I probably wouldn't test all of them because I just, I don't have the time of day to do that. So I took three different cables from five different brands a piece and uh, I mean, at least you get an idea. Like if there was a company that was producing garbage cables, I would expect at least one of the cables we had from them to show up in these results. And apart from the one thermal take riser cable that didn't do too well, um, I'm actually extremely surprised by how well they fared overall. As such, seeing as though we're constrained by our extremely small sample size, there are a few things we can still interpret from the data. Firstly, it's clear that many of these risers come from either the same manufacturer or more specifically, the same factory in China. And, and that can be a good thing so long as QC standards are maintained. You, you want repeatable good results, right? I imagine that most users wouldn't notice the small differences in performance degradation without testing extensively with and without the riser cable. So that's assuming the riser works out of the box, right? Secondly, we can safely assume that longer cables have a higher probability of failure since the small traces are susceptible to interference over longer distances. Imagine tiny channels of water running super close to each other, right? There's a lot of potential for spillage across each, which will obviously affect performance and may even corrupt the image on screen. This is a big no-no, and this is why extreme bending of riser cables should be avoided as well. Depending on the manufacturer, this could compromise the cable entirely, or at least eat into performance. Third, these risers are not ready for PCIe 4. That was made very clear to me, kind of 
unintentionally, but uh, it was cool to see it firsthand. The spec requires repeaters or short traces, even on the motherboard level, which is why risers spec for 3.0 have a difficult or even impossible time communicating with the main board and CPU. This is part of the reason why B450 and a lot of X470 boards that do support uh, Gen 4 drives with a BIOS update and a Zen 2 chip installed uh, only enable PCI 4 on that uppermost 16 lane slot. It's because the traces between that slot and the CPU are super short. If you wanted those PCI Gen 4 traces to run down to the very bottom 16 lane slot, for example, you'd have to include repeaters and they're not typically on I don't know if they're on any B450 boards. They, they weren't future-proof to that extent. So uh, if you can enable Gen 4, which we have a video talking about, uh, then it would only be on that top slot. This is just for just for B450 and X470. X570 is totally different because you get Gen 4 from the CPU and from the chipset. So yeah, different story. But I will say again that despite the lackluster performance from one of the three Thermaltake risers, I'm mildly surprised with these findings. I always thought in the back of my head that I'd be losing anywhere between 1 to 5 percent of total graphics card compute power when opting for a riser cable and something like a, a vertical graphics card kit, right? But I had no idea that those deltas would be this small. We're talking 0.1 percent versus 1 to 5 percent. That's incredible. As such, I've listed, uh, I've, I've linked a lot of these kits down below if you want to check them out. I also have in the card up top a cable mod graphics card kit review. If you want to check that out to turn your graphics card vertical Obviously, you compromise other PCI slots on your ATX or your MATX board, but uh, you get a system that looks better. So it's really all about what you prioritize. If you're only using a graphics card, you really have nothing to lose, in my opinion. It's just going to cost you around 50 or 60 bucks to get that card turned sideways and make your system look arguably a lot better than stock. You get a lot of dead space down here if you're not using it. It's nice to see that space taken up by the graphics card. Anyway. Yeah, that's a subjective thing, but uh, I'd be willing to bet that if you bought a, a riser kit from any one of these brands, including Thermaltake, because this, this is a pretty old kit from Thermaltake, they probably have done this um, a few times at this point. I know they were one of the first companies to put their brand on a riser kit because a lot of their cases earlier on supported vertical graphics card mounting. They're probably a lot better now, um, so it, it might be a bit unfair that I used an older kit. It's just these are the kits I had on hand. But uh, yeah, any of these kits, I, I think you'd be just fine. Uh, purchasing from any of these brands, and uh, that's good. Obviously, you don't want to trash your system for the sake of it looking a bit better in a case. If you guys like this video, thumbs up. You know what to do. Click that red subscribe button. Consider becoming a member. Consider um, subscribing to us on Floatplane. That would all be appreciated. I will catch you guys in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.